Good morning, folks. Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. This little video is on the moments that are introduced when we have an eccentric force. I'm finding that my students are really struggling with this simple idea. Let's say we have a cross section, like an I section here. And let's say that we have an axial force. Here's the CG. If we apply the axial force at the CG, the moment about the CG is going to be zero. Simple, straightforward. If we move that force to the top, if the axial force is at the top of this, then we can see we're going to need to move that. That means this cross section is under this much tension. So we got a P over A stress everywhere equal. But also because the force is at the top, we see we're getting a moment. What's the moment? It's the force times the distance from where it's applied to the CG of the section. So if the force is applied here, we would move it here and turn this into an equivalent force system, which means there's a force in a moment. What's the moment? Well, it's this force magnitude times the distance. This is going to be, if we take our rule, our right-hand rule, take our hand, we're going to focus, force, put our fingers in the direction of the force, and we see it's causing a moment going this way. Fingers are in the direction of the force. That's pulling tension on the top, compression on the bottom. And that's introducing a moment. And the magnitude of the moment is the force magnitude times the distance from this point to the CG. Now, if we had defined a coordinate system, right-hand rule coordinate system with X and Y, that means the moment about the X will be just this force times the position of this above our reference axis, we could call that Y, minus the position of the CG, Y bar. So force times Y minus Y bar will give us the moment about the CG using the right-hand rule. If you're using beam sign convention, which introduces smiley face bending, where the top of the section is in compression, then you could say that it's Y bar minus Y, which will give you the same magnitude, but that will draw attention to the idea that if you have a force up here, that's going to give you a negative moment because it's pulling tension on the top rather than compression on the top. Smiley face bending means the top of the beam will be under compression. So this force is causing a positive moment for right-hand rule and a negative moment using beam sign convention, which would have called this positive. Now, if we had had this force applied over here, now the moment on the section is going to be the force times the distance from this point to the CG. Now, in this case, we're talking a horizontal distance. Therefore, if the thickness of this is T, that's going to be the force P times T over 2. And it's going to give us a positive moment about the Y axis. Right hand rule. So we move this here from here to here. It's force times this distance between the point where the force is applied and the neutral axis. The force is down here directly below the CG. And that's a negative right hand rule because our if our X is going this way, that's going to give us the opposite of that. But it is giving us a positive moment for, for a smiley face bending beam sign convention. Now, if this force is applied down in this corner, you can see that you're going to get two moments about the CG. One of them is the horizontal moment. This is going to be force times this distance. That's going to be, give you a positive beam sign convention moment. And it also is going to give us a positive right-hand rule about the vertical axis. This force times the distance from this point to the CG. So what we find is for forces, if they're at the CG, they introduce no moment. And we just get a stress, P over A, axial stress. If it's anywhere else on the cross-section, it will still give you the same exact axial stress. But we will also be getting a stress according to the moment. We first need to be able to calculate the correct moment. Do we have a moment about the X? Do we have a moment about the Y? Are we using a right-hand rule sign convention or a beam sign convention? 
Next, you're going to need to be able to calculate the stress with the appropriate property. Let's say we've already figured out that we have a moment on this. If we have a moment on this like this, oriented to the centroid, this is giving us tension on the top, compression on the bottom. Our stress is going to be mc over i, which means the moment, divided by the moment of inertia, times the c to the extreme fiber. If we want the stress up here, we would use this c. If we want the stress at the bottom, we'd use this c. If you want to use the detailed equations in my handbook, you would say, okay, we've got a moment. And if this is our positive x, and if this is our positive y, that would mean that the stress up here would be at that moment, right-hand rule, times y minus y bar will give the correct stress here. And it will show that it's tension here, since our fingers are pulling away. Down here, it would be the moment times y minus y bar, right? This is negative y, right? This is, or, or actually, if, if we're using a coordinate system from here, that means it's 0 minus y bar, and that will give you a compressive stress there. But we're evaluating against this moment is actually going to be developing stresses and need to be evaluated about this horizontal axis, where we'd use width and height of the elements to calculate our I value. If we have a vertical moment, then that actually is causing this moment is causing bending about a vertical axis. We need to use properties about width and height of this. So we'd have a width and height of this element, a width and height of this middle element, and a width and a height of this element. This is another common student mistake of using this moment against a vertical section property. This moment has to be evaluated against a, the moment of inertia about that axis of the moment. This has to be stresses. Bending stresses are due to that moment acting on the I of the cross section about that same axis. That's how you do it. If you have both this moment and this moment, you now will get stresses across the section for this moment and across the section for this moment, and these need to be superimposed. Hope this helps. Make sure you understand this. You have no business in industry until you master this principle. Enjoy.